I've just been reading on uh, Wikipedia, I think it was, about an experiment that Isaac Newton did many years ago, which apparently is quite famous, even though I'd never heard of it. Uh, and it became known as Newton's Bucket. And what he did was he half filled a bucket with water and then suspended it from a long rope and then he twisted the rope up so it was very, um, very coiled. And then holding the bucket still to make sure the surface of the water was flat, he let the bucket go so it just started spinning really quick. And uh, what he saw when he did that, and I think it's... Yeah, yeah, yeah. What he saw when he did that is that uh, at first the bucket was rotating but the water was not and the surface of the water was flat as a result. And then as the, uh, the motion of the bucket was kind of transferred to the liquid, the water itself started spinning and as it spun, uh, a concave depression formed in the middle and the centrifugal force washed the liquid at the sides. So if you looked into the bucket spinning, you would see this depression of the water going at the side. And then as the... Let's see if I can get this right. As the bucket slows down, it stops it spinning as the rope unturns. Uh, for a few minutes there, the water would continue to spin, and the concave depression would persist within the water for a few moments afterwards, with water still being sloshed at the side. And... Uh, Newton's explanation, well he explained that first off being that effect has been due to the differences in uh, relative motion between the water and the bucket. But then he realised it couldn't be that. So he said what it must be that's causing that effect, which we call centrifugal force, is if you understand it, but we don't really understand it quite like that. Um, just because we give it a name doesn't mean we understand it. He said what's happening there is that um, is the water is moving or rotating not relative to the bucket but relative to this kind of stationary field of absolute space that, uh, that Newton considered to be part of the universe. For Newton, all actions, objects, events all take place against this neutral background of um, absolute space, unchanging and unmoving. And so in that particular experiment the water is, the space is staying still, the water is moving and the relative motion of water in space caused this centrifugal force, he says. And that's sort of fine, I guess. Um, he also, I think, did an ex uh, had an idea for experiment which would take it off the surface of the Earth, uh, which, which is uh, two rocks on the end of a piece of rope, he imagined. And if you take these up into space, I not how he knew about space, I don't know. If you take these up into space and, and sort of spinning them, what will happen is that the, the rope will go tight and the rocks will just kind of revolt, rotate around each other again under the influence of centrifugal force which in Newtonian terms is motion relative to stationary absolute space. And the problem with that is that uh, that Newtonian understanding of space is uh, incorrect really or it's, a, it's, a, it's an yeah, it's, it's, it's not a valid description of space, really. And that's since Einstein. Since Einstein, we understand that space is uh, uh, relative uh, and motion and time and those kind of relationships in space uh, are not the same for all observers. And so space itself is inevitably not the same. And it's not static, it's not stationary, it's not a neutral background. So, in that situation, it can't be that relative motion which is causing these centrifugal effects. And what I think falls out of Einstein and other ideas is that what must be happening in those two experiments, somehow, is that uh, it's not the effect of space that's causing centrifugal force, it's the effect of all the rest of the matter in the universe that's causing it. also the same thing which is that it is all the rest of the matter in the universe acting upon the bucket with the water or the two rocks on the end of the rope which is a pretty gobsmacking idea really uh, and the reason why I get got quite interested at that point apart from the fact it's just interesting is in relation to a video I made this morning about uh, how experience takes place and how when I run my hand across the tabletop something like that that feeling that I'm getting 
um, is, is the kind of origins of both the tabletop and my fingertips, I guess. Or the feeling... Is that right? Maybe. Well, anyway, some kind of relationship between my fingertips and the tabletop are producing that feeling which I'm calling table. So it's more accurate in many ways, I think, to say that the table and my experiencing of the table myself uh, are, are kind of falling out of that singular experience, that non-dual experience that I called it this morning. And, uh, and, and this morning I also mentioned seeing, so that uh, it's, the, it's the experience of seeing which joins the seer and the seen, the subject and the object in that relationship. And so I'm thinking about that in relation to uh, what's sometimes called the sixth sense, the proprio proprioceptive sense, that mixture of um, uh, uh, information coming from senses in our muscles and joints and the balanced senses in our ears, which tells us where we are in space at any one moment. So when I'm standing here in, in the middle of this field and I'm rocking backwards and forwards, my proprioceptive sense, my balance, and the various uh, senses in my joints and muscles are telling me um, where I'm leaning. And if I turn, if I rotate slightly, again it's those senses which are telling me what the rotation is. But in terms of Newton's bucket, where's that information coming from? The information that's telling me whether I'm about to fall over or not the information that's telling me uh, how fast I'm rotating, the if I spin really fast, the information that's telling me that the, the kind of blood is rushing to my fingertips and I can feel that weird buzzy feeling when you spin your arms around fast. Uh, all that information is coming out of a relationship between the instrumentation of my proprioception and the furthest reaches of, the, of matter in the universe. It's that that's the kind of relationship that's being set up which has given me the experience well two ways of looking at it and that's the relationship that's being set up that's given me this experience of, of kind of standing and not falling over or alternatively that relationship is um, is kind of deconstructing into uh, the universe on the one hand and my sense of standing stationary relatively stationary at a particular point in it, on the other. Myself and the universe are kind of mutually arising from that feeling, at least in uh, locational terms. Well, that's noise gone.